Laura Wilson is a photographer of people. Her work has appeared in the New York Times Magazine, The New Yorker, Vanity Fair, GQ, Vogue, Marie Claire, and Texas Monthly, among others. She has done four books. Avedon at Work documents one of the great photographers of all time. She was his assistant for six years as he worked on In the American West. Her other books are Hutterites of Montana, Watt Matthews of Lamb Shed, Grit and Glory. And she is our guest on today's episode of The Crit House. She discusses images from Henri Cartier-Bresson, Robert Capa, Jacques-Henri Lartigue, Paul Strand, and Richard Avedon. How do you talk about yourself as a photographer, as a creative person? What... I, I photograph people rather than landscapes. And uh, it's uh, people and where they uh, live, how they, uh, how they live is what interests me. And so it's portraiture. Uh, and I feel my strength is in portraiture. And then in, um, because I've been so influenced by documentary photographers post-World War II up to the present, so that I also am very interested in uh, that kind of photography. What are you working on? Is there anything you're working on now that you can share? Sure. I, I'm working on two projects. I'm uh, working right now uh, on a big project. I've worked over the last 30, 35 years in Mexico, in uh, all over Mexico. And so I'm doing an exhibition for the Meadows Museum, which is a museum of Spanish art um, connected to the Southern Methodist University. I'm very uh, interested in this right now because to go back through my archives and pull together, uh, I hope I'll have 80 to 100 photographs that will be strong and will be compelling and will be of interest to people, both Mexican people, of course, and uh, uh, people in the United States. The other project that I'm working on is behind the scenes of making movies. I've been very lucky in the last 20, 25 years to be on a number of movie sets. Uh, I have three sons who are in the movie business and I have uh, been able to be on the sets of um, their, their projects as well as other projects. Uh, so I'm doing a book behind the scenes of making movies. So we we had we asked you we we gave you this challenge of deciding on those five uh, five images that have somehow influenced your career and some people find that to be a very difficult thing to come up with five images um, was it hard and what did you go through in the process of deciding on what those five images would be? Well, if for me it was a snap. I have uh, always these five images that are uh, enormously important to me. The Cartier Bresson uh, is family. Uh, life. I mean, it's a brilliant photo. I mean, it is the decisive moment, yeah. as Cartier Bresson so famously said. And it's nothing it could be better. Cartier Bresson said it's about content and geometry. A, a, a great photograph is about content and geometry. And the geometry, of course, here is very easy to see. You see this triangular from the lower right, the dog looking up to the top of the man's head and, to, and then going down the left side of the photograph to the opposite corner, lower left. And uh, I mean, everything about it is perfection. Uh, the dog expression, the father from the back, uh, this you know, you don't even need to see his face because you can, on the expressions on the people uh, uh, who are looking at him, you know that he has a, a very kind, handsome, appealing face. Uh, and you see the grandmother and the wife and the little baby uh, and two dogs. So it's a, a just a great image because of the content, because of the intelligence behind the choice of this frame. Uh, it, it says everything about family life. It's everything good, I should say, <laughs> about family life. It's a great photograph. Well, and we speak of iconic images, and then we talk about uh, this amazing capture from Robert Kappa. What I think is uh, important about this photograph, Jeff, is Kappa, a great war photographer, and he, uh, his photographs, when I first saw them, I was, you know, very young, 
four or five years old looking at US camera uh, when I was growing up. And this was one of the first photographs or among you know maybe the first hundred photographs that I would have seen and been interested in. And, uh, and when I read about it, that he, he's actually a part of the invasion and that uh, because of the uh, horrific um, attack from the uh, Germans uh, on the bluff, but it's what makes this important to me is it doesn't matter if it's in focus. It's mm -hmm. it's, it's blurry, but it, it give, you have the immediacy the immediacy of the attack and the uh, battle underway, full scale, and uh, so I I think that it it reminds me that a photograph doesn't have to be perfect uh, photo technically. Truly so, and you can you can feel the cold and the fear and the yeah. danger yeah. that uh, that gentleman yeah. is. And the commotion, uh, the, the commotion of being in the middle of an attack. Yeah. Um, thank you for this one as well. Let's talk about your third image from Jacques-Henri Lartigue. Well, when I first saw Lartigue's book of images, it's called Diary of a Century. I had never heard of Lartigue. Nobody had, I don't think. But it, and it was actually by quite an unusual circumstance. It was Richard Avedon who brought his work um, to the American public and had edited his collection of photographs into Diary of a Century. So it was well before I knew Richard Avedon that I uh, knew this book. And I thought it was absolutely great because again, there was this immediacy. I mean, this is family life too. These are yes. his uncle, his brothers uh, who are following the uh, invention of the airplane, following what the Wright brothers had. So he, as a little boy, took this picture. I mean, I think he's 12 years old or something when he took this picture. And again, it's not... Uh, <laughs> a great photograph, technically, but it, it is so charming. And the uncle, one of his uncles is pulling the plane up into the air to, in hopes that the wind will catch it. It was like a kite, like yeah. flying a kite. And actually it crashed. Um, so they never did get up any higher than it appears here in the image. Um, but I love this photograph because of the fun. And it isn't about f-stops and shutter speeds. Oh. It's about having... Um, the eye to capture. Uh, and, and when he was a child, he, I don't know, it was before he, I think it was even before he had a camera. He knew about cameras, but it was before he had his own camera. And he said he would go with his brothers, would be doing running and jumping and making these cars, that he would stand watching them. And he would blink his eyes as if he were taking a snapshot. And so then when he actually did get a camera, when he was quite young, I think his father was the one who gave him the camera. He, he was already uh, had a very acute vision. Paul Strand with your fourth image. <laughs> yes, this I think this is a great photograph, too in the history of photography, all of the, these five pictures that I'm showing you, I'm speaking about them in the history of photography, not just things that interest me, but yeah. I think that they are among the greatest images ever made. And this one of the Italian family, I mean, the mother in the doorway and the one, two, three, four, five sons, is it? Uh, I mean, it's incredible. Each face is so powerful and strong and just the way the picture is composed. He may have, this may have been composed. I don't know that it was. I've never read how Strand did this picture, but um, it certainly looks as if it's composed, but it's beautifully composed. It is. Uh, with the, uh, I mean, it's a great portrait and each face is really strong. I mean, if he were to have just done the head and shoulders of any one of these sons, it would be a strong picture. So for instance, the son with his arms crossed and, and rest his elbows resting on his knees. Uh, I mean, what a great portrait that is just yeah. on its own. And then uh, the, the, I don't like people photographed, you know, from the side or not looking at the camera, but I like this very much, the portrait, uh, the 
look of this man in the doorway opposite the mother who is so we're seeing him in profile but it but be, and it works in profile here because of the strength of the other images looking directly at the camera we don't need everyone looking at the camera here yeah. uh, so that what would be a weak picture on its own gains strength from the direct gaze of the other five people and even the bicycle tire uh, adds a, a graphic element. So again, it's what Cartier-Bresson is saying. It's, it's both content and it's both the emotion here, of this strong emotion of the uh, mother with the five sons. Uh, so we bring whatever emotional uh, response to it that we might have ourselves. But then the graphic strength of this picture is, um, is unquestionable. So your your last image comes from a man who you have uh, worked with, Richard Abaddon. And is this from the American West series or is this? Yeah. 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 I worked for him for six years on this project in the American West. And then I did a book myself of, of Richard Abaddon at work on this project, which was such a big, important project. It was uh, perhaps the most important uh, body of work he did in his lifetime. And I learned so much from him and learned so much from working on the project. And and uh, I mean, I could see what was important, what wasn't important, what he lost patience with, what interested him. I could also see the intensity with which he worked on every single portrait and uh, also the intensity with which he worked on the entire project. You know, he would go to bed at night thinking of what he would do first thing in the morning when he got up. And he would all day long be uh, thinking of how to improve a portrait or who to photograph next to make a strong body of work. And he ended up with 122 photographs over, uh, as I said, a six year period. And we, uh, we photographed something like 744 people in mm. I don't know how many towns uh, and many, many sheets of film. This is eight by 10 film. Yeah. I learned how someone at the top of his game uh, behaves. And that's, you, you You can't take that away from someone. <laughs> you, you know, I that's always within me. So tell me why this particular image um, is as a choice. Uh, I when I when you asked for um, five images, I knew one of them would be uh, from the work of Richard Abaddon, and of course I know all of his pictures. And this woman, I think, is particularly there's a dignity to her and a kind of simplicity to her. The way she's dressed with a sweatshirt, and we would see somebody um, say by the side of the road or at a threshing bee or a rodeo. And um, you think, well, this person might make a good portrait. Uh, all of a sudden, when the person stood in front of the camera, most people have this sense of, oh, I I'm being recorded in a very serious way. Uh, you know, Dick wasn't telling her how to look. Uh, I mean, this is how she looked. It was her response to the experience of being photographed by him. Uh, and that is what uh, gives the portrait strength, I think. And of course, dignity. And as you can see, uh, beauty even. Laura Wilson, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your five images. Those are great images and it's great to hear you talk about them as well. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Jeff, for asking. I, I think it's such a good idea for <laughs> Uh, talk because uh, it's interesting to hear creative persons speak about what influences them. And I remember going to uh, an exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art, I think it was, or maybe it was the Metropolitan, uh, and Chuck Close, a, a portrait painter that didn't, who didn't interest me necessarily, mm -hmm. uh, had a room uh, full of the pictures which he chose from the archives of the museum. And it wow. was fantastic. It was a small room. I mean, maybe, you know, 30 feet by 20, 20 by 30 feet. But it was packed with, you know, sh many shelves with the pictures that he that he responded to. It was a great exhibition. So here was someone that I wasn't interested in 
his work, but I was so interested in what uh, influenced him or what he responded to. So I think it's a great idea what you're doing. Well, Laura Wilson, again, thank you so much for joining us thank on you. The Crit House. And thank you all for watching The Crit House.